Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of our Darkest Dungeon playthrough with no torches. In our last episode we had a successful dungeon mission using the Jester buff strategy and today I think we're going to embark on another mission uh, likely including the Jester as well. We've got some of our uh, upper level teammates that are in fairly good shape as far as sanity is concerned and I think we'll just get right into it. So we have a choice of dungeons today. We can uh, go into the Weald for the first time, or we could go to the Warrens or back to the Ruins. And since we haven't seen the Weald yet, I think we're going to do that. The other reason to go into the Weald is, uh, for whatever reason, it appears that Deeds are the resource that is in uh, the shortest supply in the game. So it's a good idea to try to get them whenever possible. So I think uh, the party composition today is going to be Bounty Hunter, we're gonna try the Jester in the back again. Uh, let's see, let's go with the Hellion. You know what, maybe we'll do the same party setup as we did last time. Do we have a Occultist? This guy looks like he's in pretty good shape. So let's try this uh, composition one more time. I did like the way that the Jester buffed the group. Uh, if we had a Leaper in the front, certainly the Jester strategy would uh, be more advantageous. The Bounty Hunter does not have the same issues of two hit as the uh, leapers do But in any event, let's get going with this setup. So again, we're gonna do, go with uh, eight food Just to use a bit for healing Let's grab one shovel and two of the anti-venom and bandage and I'm gonna be way more diligent on trying to use the Anti-venom and bandage this time. I noticed in the last episode 5 I had an anti-venom in my inventory and just never bothered using it for some reason So I'm gonna be uh, much more diligent on that this time. Let's head in So this is a 100% of room battle completion, so let's have a look at the dungeon layout. Uh, this is a good dungeon layout for that type of quest because we won't have to do any backtracking likely. Hopefully in one of these rooms we get a scouting opportunity to see if there's anything up here. Otherwise we'll just proceed in the straight line if we can. So onward to the first room. This typically is a negative... Uh, item but I'm gonna give it a shot just to test that theory. I, I, I'm thinking it's probably about 80% negative unless you have a cleansing item and I wonder what the cleansing item is. I've never actually tried. Should we try an anti-venom here? Uh, you, what is the typical negative effect? I can't recall. Well let's let's try let's try an anti-venom. Uh, no effect. Well we wasted an anti-venom no big deal I guess. Uh, you get food out of these I think if it's successful. Yeah, so, well, that's a lot of food from that, actually. Uh, six food, so we're going to have no shortage of food whatsoever. A shallow grave, and again, I don't know what the key item is on this. I wonder if it would be a shovel. Hmm. That's an interesting question. Well, uh, I don't want to waste my shovel on that. Maybe next time we come in here, I'm going to bring an extra shovel just to give that a try. And we got some blight, so you know what? Let's use the anti-venom. I said I was going to be diligent, so there we go. Okay, now as far as target priorities go, uh, these guys cause bleeding and these guys have AoE damage. And uh, honestly, I think I'd rather take out the brigands first. And uh, we have way more frontline ability than we do to reach the rear, so let's go with the brigands. Uh, oh, the cutthroats. Cutthroats first. Destroy. That's a good way to start the battle, apparently. A singular strike. You see, the AOE damage from them is not uh, is not very high. Like three to one is 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 a fine range, uh, but the bleeds are on top of the damage that these guys already caused. So let's uh, let's put the debuff on them, hopefully, and uh, minus twenty five percent damage, minus ten accuracy. That'd be uh, if we could stick that, I'd be very happy. Ooh, uh, just as I was saying that they can't do damage, they crit everybody for five and cause everybody to stress out, but um, it's, a, it's not a very common occurrence, so 
So we're gonna use the Jester buff strategy again. Uh, I like the way that this stacks. We can, I think we've seen it up to four or five in the previous playthrough. Now here, I think I'm gonna go for a stun. So we can use the finish him ability and hopefully get some extra damage in here. Six to 13. On the higher end of the rolls, uh, we're gonna get a kill here. Uh, three hit points, what would this do? Two to four. So an average roll is gonna kill on this. Um, well, let's take that chance. As the fiend falls, a faint hope blossoms. Again, Jester's gonna keep buffing. Now here, we have taken quite a bit of damage on our character, so I think I'm gonna start healing with the Occultist. And uh, we're gonna start with him first. And apparently that didn't do anything. Another Jester buff, what are we at now? Three stacks, I believe. Okay. Well, we don't have a whole lot of choice in the abilities to use, so we'll use the highest damaging one. Press this advantage. Give them no quarter. And let's just go for a straight burn down on this guy. Again, I'm going to try to heal here. Hopefully we roll better than a zero this time. And one more buff, four stacks. I, I wonder is theoretically how many you can do. I, I probably would think four would be the highest because it does fall off after three turns. As the enemy crumbles. These nightmarish creatures can be felled. They can be beaten. Going to go for a stun on the ectoplasm. These have the ability to split themselves, so we could see another guy pop up if we uh, if we keep them up long enough. Is there stun resist? Fifty percent. So not a not a great chance to stun on this uh, on this particular type of mob, but I think we'll uh, we'll go for it where we can. Uh, here, let's. Hmm. We got a guy that's stunned, and we could use the ability to go for more damage. Uh, or we could go into the back lines here and, and try to do some damage to these guys. I think I'm going to take advantage of the stun while it's there and see if we can get some extra damage here. So 6 to 13, even a low roll on this is going to kill, so let's go for it. Wow, <laughs> okay. I, uh, hmm. Well, let's leave the stun guy for now and see if we can do some uh, damage here. Wh which one is higher damage? We got accuracy 80 minus 67%, so they're the same. Crit mods are the same. It's just what debuff we would want to apply. Uh, dodge is zero, so we don't need to uh, reduce their dodge here, so let's go with this one. Let's go for a stun again on these. Getting a tad low on hit points here. Uh, again, I think we're going to go for the, uh, the bonus damage stun ability. And uh, we can't not kill unless we miss, so... Uh, definitely going for a heal here on the bounty hunter. Let's go for another heal on the Bounty Hunter. Four to eight. So a perfect roll on this would kill. 
Uh, or we could go for a 50% chance to stun, and I think that's what we'll do. And again, using the bonus damage to stun target move. A trifling victory. Okay, so we did get one scout here. I don't think it's going to reach to the room that we wanted it to, unfortunately. Uh, but we do know that our path is, aside from this battle, fairly clear into uh, the middle section here. So where we can, I'm, I'm going to be focusing down the uh, Acolyte uh, to prevent the further stress damage to the party. The Collect Bounty ability won't reach that, so I, I'm going to use the finish, finish Him one here. Well, we need an average roll for a kill, so let's cross our fingers. Oh boy. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna go for the kill on this instead of going for the heal. Uh, I think that'll save more damage in the long run. Wow. Uh, sh these these do have high dodge, so I shouldn't be surprised that uh, she's dodging quite a bit. Okay. Uh, definitely a buff here. And we get to buff again. And I'm going to be diligent to use the bandage on the Hellion when she comes up. Let's go for the kill on the Acolyte. Well struck. Okay, so these guys, uh, two dodge, so we uh, we could use vulnerability, but because they have such low dodge already, I think it's better to reduce their damage here. Actually, you know what? No, I, I really do need to go for a, a heal on the Bounty Hunter, so let's go for that. Okay, bandage time, and definitely going to yop to try to stun. Ooh, this combat has been all about dodging, apparently. Bandage up, and uh, no point in marking uh, targets. Uh, I explained the reason for this, I think, in episode two. Um, I think we'll be just fine using the collect bounty ability here. Definitely going to go for another stun here. And, uh, yeah, I, I think I'm gonna go for a heal. Hellion or Bounty Hunter? Let's go for Hellion this time. Well, a net one on that. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any in bandages left. Uh, but that's fine. It was a net one still. Um, let's go for the kill on the stun. Should we do that? How many hit points does he have? We can't get a kill there unless it's a crit, so let's go for this one. Okay, Bounty Hunter heal, uh, not bad, and buff with the Jester. And go for another stun. Healing up again, um, what's two rounds left there, two rounds left there. Hmm. Bleed stacking. Well, I'm wondering if this is going to be worthwhile. If I st if I do end up stacking a bleed, it's going to be uh, it's going to be very hard to make up the difference in the heal. Uh, why don't I go for a self heal this time? As victories mount. So Light levels resistance. still really high. Um, I'm gonna try walking backwards a bit and see what this does. 
Okay, yeah, it definitely does uh, lower the light level when you walk backwards. Let's just walk around in here a little bit. Try to make this just a touch harder for us. Yeah, we'll leave it there for the time being. And we've got tons and tons of food, so I'm going to use uh, some of this to heal up here. Picking the meat off the bones of a rotting beast carcass has been invaluable to us in this dungeon so far. Okay, so we have a trap coming up here. Who is our trap guy? 40%, that's a pretty high one. 30, 20, 30. So it's the bounty hunter. And yet he still couldn't do it. Curious is the trap maker's art. His efficacy unwitnessed by his own eyes. Let's rob some graves. Oh, I got rabies. Um, okay, so minus accuracy, but plus 20% damage. On some of the characters, this isn't actually a very bad, uh, uh, quote, downside to have. Um, with some of the characters that have high accuracy to begin with, uh, this is arguably a benefit, but I'm likely going to clear it off of the bounty hunter at the earliest possible opportunity. I was hoping to get a scouting, uh, a scouting activation here just so we could clear this room. Uh, unfortunately, that didn't happen, so we're going to have to explore it unless we get a scout in this one. Blight. So we have an anti-venom, use it right away. Did I see that? I didn't see that trap, so that's fine. Secrets and wonders can uh, be found pitch in black now. tenebrous corners of this place. So the last battle or two, uh, again, so we didn't get a scout there, that's unfortunate. Uh, let's, uh, let's bump up into this room. Okay. Mm I hope we don't have to eat again. Uh, shovel time. Always bring a shovel. Should we try this? I think we're gonna try it. Nothing of interest. You know what, I think the best move for us here is to move the Occultist back. Uh, it does waste one of his turns, but uh, he doesn't have his heal available in the second position, so we shouldn't keep him up here. Just gonna start... Uh taking the uh, scratchers down. I don't think there's any better option in this position, so we'll just uh, start to do some damage here. He's okay to be operating from the second position. I think she's okay in being in first position too, so there's no need to, to move this around. damage per round on the blights. Uh, wow. Well, I don't suppose there's a whole lot we can do about that right now. We'll just have to power through this as fast as possible. Let's, uh, let's get some healing going. We're going to need it. Uh, the Jester is uh, got a couple turns before he gets super low. Um, let's do a self heal though. Let's 
the stun resist. 25%, 25%. So definitely go for a stun here. It's a, it's a darn good thing that he didn't take another stack of that, because 6 is very aggressive. Uh, don't see any reason why we shouldn't just keep uh, pushing these scratchers down. These guys do the, the uh, two-party blight, but so far I'm handling it okay, I think. Let's get a heal on the Jester here. I would like the uh, the Jester that I use in this strategy to have the uh, stab melee ability that will pull him to the front line. It's very useful for the end of combat when there's one enemy left and the ordering of your characters doesn't matter. So he can stay in the back for the entire battle, uh, buffing as he's doing right now, and then you can use him as a finishing move. Uh, but unfortunately this character didn't come stock with it, so we'll have to train it later on. If he survives, that is. Really want to get this guy down this round and we can start working on the uh, fungal artillery. Let's get a heal going who's... Uh, Let's get this on the Bounty Hunter. Oh, we rolled a zero, unfortunately. Well, we've been having a bit of difficulty with this combat. There was a couple dodges in there that uh, didn't do us so well. Uh, here, uh, she's got her damage debuff on right now because of the stunning. Uh, is it worthwhile to go for just a stun here then? Yeah, I think that's uh, I think that's what we'll do. So he's gonna tick in a death's door on his next activation here. So we'll heal him. Try to roll better than a zero this time. Well, that's much better than a zero. Okay, well, we'll just start uh, working these guys down then. They have 14 hit points total. Let's get a buff going. You know, really, once she's uh, she's yopped once in a battle, it's it really isn't um, it really isn't wise to switch back to a damage ability. Uh, you know, and she's stacking, she's stacking her de her self debuff that she does when she does the stun. So, you know, to do a, uh, a damaging move right now, the damage is a lot lower than than what it, it really should be because she's debuffed. But I don't see any reason to stop stunning once you've started to stun with her. So we'll just keep doing that. See, this would have been a, a really good time to have the Jester's uh, forward stab ability. Because uh, really, at this point in the battle, buffing further is uh, of limited use. We'll, we'll probably have a pretty good stun lock on this character until he's dead. This expedition at least promises success. And that's the dungeon. Don't have a key to use, so we'll just open her up. is an endless battle but one that uh, must the money was a little low um, that's unfortunate but we did get some deeds which are a very tough uh, currency to get and overall our heirloom collection seems to be pretty good so I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with that run let's see what our traits are Warren's phobe minus 20% resistance Warren's 
plus two speed above light 75, which is rarely going to apply to us. I'm obsessed with the paranormal. I don't know what that does. I'd imagine it's uh, it makes him open items that automatically that I might want to skip. 20% resists and light above 75. Uh, it'll apply for the first couple rooms of any dungeon we do and thereafter probably useless. Obsessed with food. Uh, I don't, th I mean obviously this is referring to a food intake increase. Uh, I don't know how much it actually increases the food intake of this character, but uh, I'd imagine it maybe is uh, a double, double stack, so he'll eat two instead of one. Family name well, as another successful dungeon, I think in the next episode, uh, because we have some currency to spend and we've got a lot of money, I think we're going to start upgrading our town a little bit more. Uh, but otherwise, it was a successful run. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.